Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the Astrology University podcast. Really glad to have you all here listening and also uh, glad to welcome Aubrey de Klerk, who's going to be talking a little bit about Chiron with us today. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Aubrey. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tony. Awesome. So um, Aubrey is a, a career coach and uses astrology in her practice as well as one of, in her massive toolkit. And she loves working with people to help them um, uh, get more clear about direction in their life, among other things. And so uh, she's been presenting a series of, of uh, lectures in recent years on Chiron. And so, and using Chiron in career, which isn't like a super common technique. So I just thought maybe we could talk with Aubrey today about uh, Chiron. And uh, maybe we can just start, Aubrey, by telling us what got you interested in Chiron in the first place. Yeah, well, I was doing a lot of work with um, a group here in Portland. It was called Life by Design Northwest, and it was working with people ages 50 and over on what their next steps were in career. And so I would attend other colleagues' presentations and listen to what was happening in the group. I would be facilitating weekly groups on transition. And I would hear a particular kind of pain come up. And of course, my mind, whether I'm using astrology or not, is always thinking about astrology in the background. My mind was like, what is this? This, you know, not everybody's in that range, you know, for a second Saturn return, right? They're past Uranus opposition, right? There's you know, there was something in there that I, that I knew was going on, but I couldn't quite name it. So that's when I started to get really curious about what might be happening in that age range that give me some information about how to support people better and, and also to find out what particular kind of pain they're experiencing. Interesting. So um, you started out with like a timing trigger and then did you, yeah. did you just start studying Chiron more yourself or like, yeah. what kind of material did you gravitate towards? Everything I could find. <laughs> right. So at that point, I was like, oh, because I had touched on Chiron in my chart in my studies with Emily Trinkus. And so it had stood out to me and I was beginning to know mine. But just like, you know, like all of us as astrologers, we don't lay our own chart and assume that that's the way it is for everybody else. Right. Sure. And that's the same thing about this Chiron work is that it is it, it, in career specifically as it is. It's super useful for some people and maybe not at all, depending on their chart for others. Um, but yeah, it had already been studying for myself. And then I started trying to find all the information that I could, right? So picking up books, Melanie Reinhardt, Martin Lass, Adam Gainsburg, like anybody who was writing anything, um, Jessica Davidson online, you know, just really, um, really just scouring the resources and starting to look at it through the lens of work life and say, you know, and then bringing it up in people's charts, like they just be like, wow, I'm going to add this in. You know, just like, I don't know if you've done this or other astrologers have done this. Just like pop in an asteroid or pop in a certain, you know, point in the sky and start to see if the awareness in the conversation comes up or not. And so I was like, hmm, let's see. And it did start coming up. Interesting. So um, have you found that Chiron is important for everyone? Is it more important for people with a strong Chiron aspect in their natal chart? Well, I, I find that it plays a part, but it isn't always what brings people in to talk to me. So I'll say that. So it isn't something that um, when I, I look at the chart ahead of time, right, but then we just allow the conversation to go where it's going so I can be the most helpful. And so I'm not going to try and like make Chiron fit in that conversation. But a lot of times, so I, I don't think it's unusual in this experience. A lot of people come and they're having an experience of it. And yes, it's prominent. And, and people can define what that means by prominent. Like I get all sorts of questions from them. It's like, I've been stymied by Chiron being retrograde or, you know, Chiron doesn't have any aspects in my chart, right? Of the main aspects or it's heavily aspected um, or they're having a certain transit of Chiron to something in their chart, which can look a certain way or they're having um, a certain passage of Chiron to itself. So, yeah, I mean, but that could be just the fact that I've been studying it and spending time on it. And so then I attract people that are, that have that, that in their chart. I don't know if you've experienced that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've, I've put some, some interesting uh, planetary bodies in my own charts, but yeah, I, I definitely, when you, when you start to grasp an archetype or an aspect, it seems like those people will start showing up as your clients um, because it's like in your field and you're yeah definitely attracting them. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that for your out of bounds research, right? Like it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, people always ask me if I have out of bounds planets and I I don't. Uh my moon is at high declination. It's almost out of bounds. It's right there on the on the border there. 
but uh, but yeah. And how about you with Chiron? Do you have a strong Chiron aspect yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always tell people up front in my talks, you know, just to be really clear about like why I'm doing this. And that it's coming through my own personal experience and for them not to take that on, right? To really understand that like I come here with my own stuff around it. Right. And that we're all building this. You know, I know that Stephen Forrest talks about like how new it is to all of us, right? So we're all building our understanding as time goes on. So I know I position myself as an expert, but position myself as someone that, you know, also has um, some connections. But like for me, I have um, a cardinal cross that includes my sun, my moon, my Uranus, and then um, Chiron conjunct Mars. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's people that's, in the background watching, going like, oh, oh no. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's funny. We, I, well, I, I don't know if this happens to you, but I tend to attract people who have um, similar uh, chart patterns in my, like, who reflect things in my own chart, and I do the same thing as you. I say. You know, I don't know if you should listen to my advice on this <laughs> thing because I have the exact same aspect, but here's what I've learned. So well, for what it's worth. What's so interesting about that is like we think about that Chiron dynamic, right? And we think about that and just even inside the chart, regardless of career or not, it's that notion of like where we have those senses of pain is where we have empathy and that we're working on it and we do so much research on it or live our lives so much and reflect on it that there's wisdom or at least benefit that we can give to other people. But I think that, you know, as long as we're keeping the boundaries straight, that dynamic can help healing for everybody. So regardless of Chiron's involved or not, I think that that kind of um, lens or perspective can be helpful and like supports just what you're saying, I think. Yeah, that's so well said. And um, I've, I've found that myself because I, you know, I do that caveat and it's a little joke and, and yeah. we kind of laugh together. But then um, what I usually find is that I, I'm surprised by what, comes out of me even you know as a teacher too or as a as a counselor sometimes you can you know the way forward even if you haven't integrated it yourself so you can still hold that space for someone mm -hmm. um, so you can still say you know um <laughs> I, for this is a terrible example but <laughs> i think we should probably stop drinking as much <laughs> even, <laughs> though, even though you haven't fully done it yourself and but you can convey the way the path forward to someone else even even if you're not quite there yet yourself so yeah, and that when I talk to people about Chiron is like this, like, like yay for you, ouch for me. Right? <laughs> it's like you can super encourage other people to do it. You have no problem getting behind that advice, but when you try and take it for yourself, it's it's more painful. It's more tender. Right. Yeah, I, I remember my sister when I told her I was going to be a coach. Um, she's like, "Don't you have to have your life figured out first before you do that?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I sure hope not." <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. And that, that statement, yeah. having your life figured out, I mean, yeah. that's just a funny statement in itself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I see where she's coming from, right? Like that whole concept of like, that's why we have all these phrases that like resonate for me with Chiron, you know, like Dr. Heal Thyself and, you know, all these things. Like we have a, a um, and it's something to me that with the Chiron work that I do, yes, specifically with individuals, but also looking at a societal realm is like we we have a lot of pressure on people who are experts and tend to um, me included, it can turn our lives over, whether that's a doctor or an astrologer or whoever, right? And say like, well, you're the expert, show me how to do it right. And this whole work with Chiron is very important, I think, in the sense of empowering oneself, you know, not um, in spite of or ignoring or after you've totally healed a wound, but in the experience of doing that, that there's still value in that. Do you sense this, you know, um, I, I've sensed something that I'm not sure if it's a real thing or not, but I feel like there's a shift happening um, culturally where we're, we're shifting away from putting all our faith in experts. And I think maybe that has to do with the internet and access to information. And, and um, a lot of us are coming to our doctors, for instance, having already read some stuff about the condition that we think we might have when we say, hey, I read about this uh, or this symptom, you know, do you think that you know, this is a possibility. Whereas before we would just put all of our faith and trust in, in that professional. Yeah. And I think it's a good thing. Now, I, you know, I, now I've gotten myself online, like trying to diagnose myself and got myself really worried about stuff that isn't <laughs> even true. But like for me to have a, a, um, a relationship with my doctor, my naturopath, and be able to go in and that she believes that I am a partner and I know my body best, right? But that she has some knowledge, a lot of knowledge that I don't. Right? So I have my personal experiential knowledge, and she has a lot of knowledge as a doctor. You know, and I think about that just in difference generationally, 
you know, from my mom. I was involved with my mom's caregiving for a long time and, you know, the way that she and some of her peers related. So I'm not trying to box everybody in generation, generationally, but I think you're right. And I think that can be a really positive change. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this change definitely goes across generations um, because although the uh, people in in um, older generations might be more <laughs> more familiar with that approach of putting mm-hmm. all your faith in the doctor, they also have access to the internet and they're, yeah. they're changing as well at the same time. So I think we're all changing in this together. Um, it's just that they've been around longer, so that that approach was maybe a little bit more ingrained in them. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more second nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of, of, uh, of change and timing getting, and getting back to Chiron, do you find that even if somebody doesn't have a strong Chiron aspect in their chart that a Chiron trigger might bring them in or? Yeah, like a, a transit might bring them in, right? Chiron transiting something in their chart or more specifically Chiron transiting itself, like having a passage of some kind and most likely for people that are uh, following astrology, um, in, you know, in more detail, I'd consider that the squares, the oppositions and the conjunctions, right? The return. And do you think the Chiron return is something that we should uh, take as much stock in as, say, the Saturn return? Do you think it it, it carries uh, that much impact? I think so, right? Given through the lens of my experience and my clients, it has. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that less about like being afraid of it or having to have a certain outcome of it, but thinking about you know what energy is available and if people are having an experience that lines up with what we know about it or even if we, what we don't know about it, but they're attributing it to that experience in their chart to spend some time with it, to see if there's a way to um, help, help grow from that experience. Definitely. Seems kind of like we would do with any transit. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm really glad you're, you're doing this work and especially uh, tied into career. Cause it's, it's such a, it's a topic that really gives people a lot of, angst over the course of their life. One of the things I noticed early on that I was kind of humbled by myself in my own practice working with clients is I would have um, older folks come in for consults with me um, and they would be 60 or 70 and they would still be kind of thinking like, what am I going to be when I grow up? (laughs) And just realizing that, um, you know, staying present with your soul's growth or your your path Mm -hmm. in life is a constant process. And Sometimes there's a death and renewal and death and rebirth cycle that happens a lot for some of us more than others. And so there's a lot of change in that, in that process. And, and just being, um, I guess, circling back to that comment earlier about having it all figured out. um, Mm. I feel like for me, my, myself, it's, it's about having it figured out in the moment. And then, um, and that that means something different than, I mean, I don't really buy into that concept anymore of thinking that I'm going to, figure it all out at some point and then be done. <laughs> right. Get to a spot. And, and right. I think that, you know, we've talked a lot of, you know, about um, our experiences with Buddhism and other ways of thinking, right. And yeah. in, in terms of um, spending time in the present and then also to hop onto what you're saying before about, you know, thinking of this, you know, we have, you know, really strong societal things about, you know, preference for youth and, you know, life and work are over at a certain age or the growth stops or those kinds of things, which I think that um, other cultures and indigenous cultures know better than that. Um, Right. So yeah, I hear you on that continual growth and, you know, (laughs) depending on the transit, how excited I'm feeling about that. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Let's not, let's not sugarcoat it. um, (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I, I love uh, Rick, Rick Hansen's work and um, he talks a lot about, he, he does a lot of work and, and I, I do work like this with my clients and I know you do too. That's, mm-hmm. that's about, um, you know, encouraging growth or, or um, he has a process called um, um, acknowledging the good, uh, something like that. I'm not saying it quite right, but it's mm-hmm. about, it's called taking in the good and it's about um, acknowledging or remembering or creating a positive experience and spending time with it because of our own um, negativity bias and how we tend to over accentuate the negative just really naturally biochemically in our in our psyche and I, I feel like of course that's uh, Saturn that's the Saturn process in our psyche and um, we have to intentionally bring the volume up on some of the positive experience but that doesn't mean that we're negating the negative experience. It just means that we're also equally acknowledging the positive. So yeah. Yeah. Getting some more balance. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, so, and it, go ahead. Oh, no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go. It is in a, um, it's kind so, of a non It's so order. Portland. It's so Portland. <laughs> we have to just take a, a quick... Is it been two now? I know. Well, I don't know if it's... I, I, it's been so, so snowy here. <laughs> I haven't been driving as much, so I haven't Oh, seen yeah. It. But for those of you who don't know the inside joke here, um, Aubrey and I both lived in... Well, I, I just moved to Bend, Oregon, so I'm still in Oregon, but I lived in Portland for nine years, and... Aubrey's living there too. And there's this thing that happens at stoplights. I think you've seen it parodied on TV. <laughs> Portlandia, but, yeah. Yeah. But where you, you, it's not stoplights, it's stop signs where mm -hmm. it's like, it takes forever for somebody to go because the person's like, no, you go, no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Portland. Um, yeah. So I was going to make kind of a non sequitur bit about that balancing yeah. that brought up when we were talking about aging and, you know, the Chiron return fit kind of fits into this, but you know, there's been more and more books recently, astrologically, you know, like astro uh, midlife is not a crisis, right? There's a, um, a longstanding um, great book, astrology of midlife and aging. Right. And I think that, you know, we're, I think we're catching up a bit. Definitely. Definitely. And so many, so much good work being done across so many fields. And of course the internet is helping us all be aware of that and pull things in, you know, yeah. to, to our work so that yeah. everything can kind of cross pollinate. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you gave a uh, really uh, awesome uh, presentation for the Fresh Voices in Astrology Summit, which uh, I created last summer. Um, and it's a spinoff from Astrology University, but it's actually its own website now and its own, it has a life of its own. And um, your talk was called Chiron, the Key to Our Careers. And you're going to be presenting a webinar for Fresh Voices this weekend um, on Sunday, the 17th at 2 p.m. So I thought maybe you could just tell people a little bit about the intention behind um, the presentation you're going to give this weekend. Yeah, so um, after having that conversation, people are pretty um, excited about going in a little deeper into their own charts or others' charts and understanding the dynamics of Chiron, because in that first one, we were talking about um, basically Chiron in the natal chart, right? Its position in terms of um, sign and house, my thoughts on applying that to career and possibilities for that. And um, when we got back to, to the end of that, we decided, okay, well, maybe we want to do something more experiential, so then we can bring on some folks that might have... Um, you know, more intermediate knowledge of astrology to start talking about what does it look like in, in terms of aspects? What does it mean in terms of transits? How can that be influential in looking at career? And to just do a, a tiny recap, it's like is looking at Chiron and, and saying where might we be that, you know, we're just like we were talking about before that there's a lot of gifts that we have to give in our lives and where might that be sitting in the midst of the pain or where might we be missing the things that we do really well for other people that we just look past, right? That we see as obvious or not that special. Um, or see where there are experiences that we have things that get in our own way um, about having the work lives that we want, whatever that is, right, without judgment or, or uh, assumption about what having a good work life means. So what we wanted to look at this time was to spend some time interacting and having conversation with people. So three people have volunteered to have um, their chart as an example, and we're going to have a group conversation. I'll do a little um, upfront recap about the dynamics about Chiron in the chart and then go into uh, mostly conversation and um, yeah group interpretation and you know mostly this idea of trying it on for people to see if if it is something that they um, that for themselves or if they are reading charts for other people because a lot of people have told me and being like you know Chiron's really interesting but I still am not, I'm like having a little trouble getting my you know arms around it or getting it so that's a long answer to a short question about the intention and what we're doing on Sunday. And I think uh, I'm hearing Melanie Reinhardt's voice in my head because she just did a Chiron yes. series for Astrology University. And yes. I think if she heard that person saying, I'm not quite getting it, she's, I think she might say, well, it sounds like you're actually on, on track. Right. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get it, you know? Yes. And, um, yeah. and then she, she actually spent really three webinars trying to describe what it means to get Chiron and, yes. and how, how that's kind of a complex uh, complex thing in and of itself. And she, I thought she did a wonderful job of kind of describing that. Um, and and uh, again, about that thing, how we attract what we're, what we're interested in or studying. Um, like two days after that webinar series, one of my clients wrote in this really detailed story that was, um, uh, you, you could just, hear Chiron coming through the uh, story. 
um, so strongly. And of course, looked up and she's having a m massive major Chiron transit as part of this. And, and um, yeah, so really, really interesting correlations there. And it was, it's not something that you can just, uh, rep, you know, describe in a bumper sticker phrase or, right. or a sentence or even a couple of keywords. It's, it doesn't kind of, the archetype doesn't really lend itself to those kind of descriptions. Right. And I think one of the things that Melanie did, does so beautifully just in general is like make sure that we're not just in our brains about it. Right. Like you know, astrologers have a tendency. We want to sharpen our brains on each other and, you know, think, think, think and what's, you know, calculate and, you know, yeah. interpret and the, the bringing it into a feeling experience. Right. And in language that, you know, um, invites a feeling experience. So she did that through meditation and um, different, you know, just and then just her, her way. <laughs> you know, I think her, her, for me, her way does that for me, her way of speaking, her way of approaching subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, folks, if you're interested in, in uh, participating in the webinar with uh, Aubrey, definitely tune in uh, over at freshvoicesinastrology.com. There's a, if you head over to the event calendar there, you can sign up for the webinar. And as part of that, if you missed her presentation at the summit last year, you can add on that to your uh, webinar package and, and listen to that before the uh, webinar on Sunday. So it's Sunday, March 17th um, at 2 p.m. If you're listening to this podcast after March 17th, you can still tune in and get the download um, now today. And Aubrey, um, you want to tell folks a little bit about how to contact you if they're interested in learning more about your own work or working with you one-on-one? Uh, -on -one? Sure. I have um, a site specific to the Chiron work I'm doing. It's chironcareer.com. And you can also see the work that I do in terms of coaching and astrology on a broader scale at coachingforclarity.net. Beautiful. Well, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule today to chat with us. It was, uh, it was a, a pleasure having you here and I look forward to your webinar coming up. It's always good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Aubrey. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care.